Um, let me tell you something about Matt. Um, remind you that Matt is Senior Vice President Sales, Training and Recruiting for Tektronic Industries, Inc. Um, he's been with Tektronic for more than three years. Prior to that, Matt worked for Black & Decker for 15 years, so I suppose you're going to drill down to the heart of the matter. Couldn't resist that, sorry. Um, in sales and then marketing, and finally rose to the giddy heights of training. Um, he holds a BSc in business and an MBA from Northeastern University in Boston. And in his spare time, you get some spare time, do you, Matt? Enjoys spending time with his family coaching baseball and soccer and sport fishing. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And good job, Kevin. Um, I think what Kevin showed you is kind of the education side and the, the theoretical sides. And uh, what I'm hopefully going to show you now is kind of how we actually execute a lot of what Kevin was talking about in, in a company. And I've had the opportunity to do this twice, as he mentioned. I do want to clarify, I do not have an MBA uh, from Northeastern. I went to Northeastern for an undergrad degree. I have an honorary degree at University of Maryland College Park, but I do not have an MBA. So I want you all to be very clear with all this craziness going on, especially in the US. We have a lot of uh, 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 crazy things going on with uh, colleges and universities and coaches and everything else. I want to be clear, I do not have an MBA, OK? Um, I think the MBA would actually mess me up some in real life. Uh, but anyways, I'll talk about that later. Um, what I've had the opportunity over the last uh, 25 years of industry is uh, be involved with sales, with marketing, then also with training. And a lot of times in corporations, those don't really tie that well together. Matter of fact, they're on different pages. So what I'm going to show you is how we work together with our marketing folks, uh, the sales folks. And fortunately, I have sales and training. So it's very easy to tie those two together, OK? Um, uh, it was interesting. We were at dinner last night. We were talking about stories. And uh, when I was in high school, I wrestled a kid. I was a sophomore in high school. And I wrestled a senior from another small high school in Massachusetts who had been brought in from another country. And uh, they had a bodyguard on each side of the mat. I had no idea who this was. And the, they had a bodyguard walking the crowd. And I'm like, gosh, you know, who, who am I wrestling today? You know? And uh, there's 30 people in the fans, and there's three security guards. So there's one security guard for each 10 people, OK? Small town. And uh, come to find out, he was a prince. He was a prince of Jordan. Wasn't supposed to become the king, but eventually became king of King Hussein's uh, son, Abdullah, who's now the king of Jordan. And the reason I'm telling you that story is I don't have uh, a, a great background to tell you or, or lots of great stories. but. When I was, when I was a, a kid, I had a great opportunity that fell onto my lap. And uh, uh, some of my friends don't even know the story. But uh, when I was uh, in uh, fourth grade, which in the US is about 10 years old, a major movie picture uh, came to film in my little hometown. I grew up in a town of 2,000 people. And in comes this Hollywood movie to film in my town. And I actually had the opportunity to try out for some parts. I have to be very frank and honest with you. Uh, I didn't do too well. I ended up as an extra in the background scenes. You can see me on film three or four times in, in, in the first version of the movie and the second version. And, uh, but what was neat is at a very young age, I got to watch this charismatic leader in action. And this guy was 26 years old. They almost shut down the movie because it was a $3 million budget back in many years ago. I won't tell you how old I am, but I graduated high school over 30 years ago. But they shut this. They almost shut the movie down because he went way over budget. It was $3 million. He spent $9 million, which was a ton of money back in the early 70s. And this guy went on to be very famous. And the reason I mention him is he went on to make billions, and I, and I haven't even made a million yet. Okay? Um, and the gentleman was Steven Spielberg. And I had the opportunity as a boy to play baseball with him, play catch with him, eat lunch with him, because he was just a 26-year-old kid trying to make his name in a big movie. And the movie was Jaws. And uh, what was neat about Steven Spielberg, someone asked me at dinner last night, who was my favorite leader? And I'd love to say Steven Jobs, because that's a popular thing right now. Or there's so many great leaders, Jack Welch at GE. Um, but I go back to Steven Spielberg, because he was very charismatic, but he got stuff done. And he did things over and over and over. And I was one of the heartaches of poor Steven Spielberg. I was just an extra. And every time I walked by the camera, I'd be staring in the camera. He'd have to do a retake every time. So we did one little scene that I was in 30 times because some 10-year-old punk that was not even uh, an actor kept messing up the scene. Um, but anyways, what I want to show you here and what I've seen from great leaders and people that can uh, get things done, uh, whether it's movies or whether it's business, is I want to show you um, what I want to show you is the, uh, 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 sorry, it's up top here. Um, what I want to show you is how we can be practical and show you how we can make an impact uh, with learning and, and actually tied into uh, business results. So uh, real quick, and I won't do a lot on this, um, 
we are a global company, so it's very, very important that when we chose an e-learning partner, CertPoint, that we had to make sure that we could cover our bases. We're, we're an interesting company because we're actually incorporated in Hong Kong. We're founded in Hong Kong. We're founded by a German, okay, in Hong Kong who was over there 45 years ago, started to see this thing's going to take off in China, Hong Kong, et cetera. And uh, about 70% of our business, though, is in the United States. About 25% of our business is in Europe. So it's very, very important when we chose a partner that this partner had to be able to work with Europe, had to be able to work with Hong Kong, which is a whole different world, the Far East. We have plants there, et cetera. And then also the United States. So it was very, very critical. And we're global, as you can see. We have factories in South Carolina, in Mississippi, in the US, Mexico, uh, Czech Republic, and a bunch in China. So we are truly a global company. And we actually make about 98, 99% of the stuff we sell. So that's unique today, as you know, people outsource everything. If you uh, follow some of these uh, little companies that are making products for Apple right now, hopefully some of you have bought stock in them. Uh, they're going through the roof, these suppliers. Even Apple doesn't make you know, the iPhones and things. So we make about 99% of the products we sell. So it's very critical that we have to be on the same page and our e-learning has to be on the uh, same page. Um, this is just to give you an idea. We're a small company. I left a $10 billion company, Stanley Black & Decker, where I spent 19 years. And I've been here for about five years. And we're about a $3.5 billion company, which is relatively small in our space, in the hardware industry. Uh, what's impressive about this, though, is uh, we were about $300 million 10 or 12 years ago. And now we're about $3.5 billion. So when I joined uh, five years ago, we were about $2.8 billion. And the problem we had, which happens in these entrepreneurial companies, our founder is st still owns a third of the company, the German gentleman I mentioned. And it's very tricky when you come into these companies not to disrupt the apple cart, because everything is very successful. You know, they're, they're doing very well, but there are no systems in place. We didn't have e-learning. We didn't have a training center. So uh, part of being the VP of sales, they said, you've got another project. By the way, you've got to launch this training center uh, in the US, uh, have a satellite in Europe and then uh, find a way to teach our people better because we weren't doing any training, any e-learning, et cetera. So this was a new concept to 19,000 people. I came, parachuted in. I was the first one dropped in in the US into this company that's, what's this guy now? We've done great without this, this jerk, right? We don't need him, right? So I was in a very tough situation. So I also, thanks to uh, Kevin, had to get to Kilpatrick 4 within a year or two. I, I didn't have time to go through stage one, level one, two, three we had to show a value in how we could make money with this immediately. Matter of fact, this wouldn't have been approved if it hadn't been for the fact that I could show them value and how we could save millions of dollars for the company by launching e-learning. So this gives you a stat to the company. And the second box down here, we launch about 300 new products every year. About a third of our products are getting either redone or new every single year. So e-learning is absolutely critical. If you can think of the thousands of salespeople across the, the world, if we don't use e-learning, we have no way uh, to make sure they know the products and all the different products we launch. Uh, we have one product uh, group, uh, Cordless from Ryobi, that does over 250 million just in our one big customer in the US, Home Depot. And if our salespeople, the 400 plus people that call in the Home Depot stores, they're the B and Q of Europe, kind of, uh, just to put things in perspective, uh, or of UK, I should say. Um, if I don't train those people and they don't know how to run that $250 million cordless business, we could get killed by our competition. So the first course we launched was one of our biggest, most profitable businesses, and that's how we did it, okay? And I'm going to show you here in a second. Um, the other two thing is that we are increasing profits like crazy, and our sales are growing in a very tough time. So there's no way I could come in and spend a half a million or $750,000 unless I can show how we're going to create profit from it, because we're a very profit-oriented, market-share-driven company. Um, what you can see here is our, our ultimate goal is to increase profit and share worldwide. We don't have these big vision statements. Matter of fact, our CEO doesn't even believe in vision statements. He thinks it's uh, a hogwash. Mission statements and all these different statements, right? He thinks people focus too much on the statement than they do getting actual results, OK? So that's our goal, is to increase share and profits, OK? And most importantly, do that by rapid expansion of the products I just talked about. We're launching and innovating all the time. Matter of fact, fortunately, about six years ago, an engineer in our company came up with 126 patents on lithium cordless power tools. So all the lithium power tools have to come through our company. It doesn't matter who makes them. They're, somehow, they're either going to settle with us or work with us. But thank God for our company. We were out in front of the lithium ion craze. And as you know, especially in Europe, where it's almost, NICAD's almost outlawed, and it's starting to be in California, it's going to sweep across the US. Everyone's going lithium because of the environmental factors. So much safer than NICAD, et cetera. 
So um, our first big project um, that we used with e-learning and saved millions of dollars for a company was a very simple thing that you might think, but it was returns, okay? Our biggest customer in the US, we were uh, taking back returns as high as 7% when I joined the company, okay? We got it down to about four and a half and couldn't move the needle. So this is when e-learning came into effect, okay? We put together a very innovative course and, and uh, taught our people how to handle returns at the store level. We then trained the associates in the store from what we learned from our e-learning course, okay? And then we put it in place. Our returns are down to about 2.5% now, okay? For every percent, just at our largest customers, about $14, $15 million. So when we do this globally, it's a, it's a lot of money. Uh, we saved about $33 million over the last two years by implementing this through our e-learning system. And the cert point company that we chose and I used in a prior life at the old company uh, helped us through this whole process. We could not have done it. As I mentioned up front, we are a great manufacturing company. We manufacture, like I said, 99% of the products we sell. But we were terrible, we had no e-learning, and we had no, um, no uh, uh, training at all. Okay, so this was absolutely critical that they had to hold our hands. And I have over 400 folks, you know, running a sales force. I have this training group that we built, the training center, world-class center in, in Wisconsin. And then uh, e-learning falls under that. And then I'm in charge of the leadership program, which we've hired over 600 college grads in the last five years. So I'm spread pretty thin. So what was neat is I had used this other, you know, cert point in the past. When I came to this company, I guided the company through the RFP, and we had 16 companies narrowed it down to four. And when we actually did the visits, I had one great training guy. And the other ones, unfortunately, had to leave, and we brought new folks in. But the guy that did the, the RFP and was in charge of it had to go out and visit the four companies. And he said, why aren't you going? And I said, I can't go. I said, it's a conflict of interest. I said, I used this company before. I want you to go out and find out who the best is out of these last four that we're looking at. And these are big name companies that you've all heard of. Some of them are probably in this room. So um, what we did is that he went out and he came back and cert point he chose uh, because I wanted to make sure my team uh, believed in this system because they're the ones that are gonna execute it, implement it, and do all the work, right? I'm just the, uh, the champion of the program, selling it through the uh, 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 CEO who I report to. Um, and then the second thing, the classroom effect was uh, astounding. We've cut our classroom, we, we launched classroom training about five years ago. In the last year, uh, we, we've, cut, uh, we've cut our classroom training by about 33%. So we built up this beautiful world-class center, which is great, because we use it for customers. So we, we don't cut that at all. The customer interface and bring them into our corporate headquarters is wonderful. Uh, we, we bring all our major customers in, we train them there, we show them our world-class center. Uh, we do all our meetings in there, so there's more use to this room than just training. But our classroom training, we've cut about a third, okay? And this is fully integrated into our employees when they start. All employees have to take safety courses and various harassment courses, et cetera, stuff that legally are very important to us, so everyone can take them at the same time when they join the company. But as you all know, they are in the field, the tracking mechanism and everything that we can do to follow up and make sure. So when we launch a product, uh, just my sales force is about 400 plus folks in the U.S. What we do is we launch a course, an e-learning course, about five days prior. And then we, uh, uh, within a week, we check to see the results. And typically all but about 30 folks have taken the course, because it's mandatory. And then those 30 that don't, an automatic email comes out from me saying, just want to let you know, um, you know, you must have been busy. I know you were busy working in the stores, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. But this needs to be done in the next three days. And if they don't, they get written up and no one gets to that point. You get a write up because this is very critical. If you don't know our product and our features and benefits and what we do against competition, you're really useless to us in the field. So you've got to learn this product. And it's not mean, it's not, you know, we, 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 don't, we do test them, um, but we make the questions very simple uh, and uh, we need an 80 or above to pass the course. So it's not like if someone's not as good at test taking, we feel they can still pass the test, but it's mandatory e-learning. The company, before I got there, had a system um, that they never used. It was basically canned courses that they brought in from different suppliers, and uh, there's no tracking, no mechanism. They never looked at it. So we look at it daily. The regional managers get, uh, for their 14 or 15 folks, get reports. The divisional managers above them, and it comes to my desk also. So we get reports all the time to make sure people are passing this and, and doing their, their work. So um, we mentioned that about a third of our products are new every year. So e-learning for us is also very, very important. And this is where CertPoint really helped us. Remember, I had no expertise in this new company in, in learning. 
nor could I bring anyone from the other company because it was I had all sorts of confident confidentiality agreements, et cetera. So we literally, the first 10 courses, we needed our new partner, SurfPoint, to guide us through, help us through, and we packaged that as part of the initial deal with them. So they helped us through. Now my team is cranking through courses like you wouldn't believe because our LCMS uh, uh, content creator is, is excellent at making sure, very simple for our people to use. And we've since hired someone that knows how to do it and, and works hard with it. But, but when we started, we, we really relied on our partner because again, our culture, had nothing to do with you know, uh, e-learning or uh, sales training. So it was very, very critical. They helped us through this early. Uh, product launches, because of all these new products, bless you, because of all these new products, um, it's critical, as I mentioned, that they've got to learn them. And we would send out CDs for years. This was part of our value analysis or value selling when we sold the CEO on this. Uh, and I don't have the savings here for product launches, but it's, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. And, and the way we've been able to save money here is we would do all these fancy CDs, send them out, and people would use them as coasters on their coffee. I don't know if any of you are in sales, but the typical sales guy gets one and says, puts it on their desk and says, I'll get to it, right? And then they stack them up, about 10 of them, and they just, no one's looking, they throw them out. Salespeople just don't take, you know, they're all so busy, right? They're too busy to take a CD, put it in their computer. So with the, with the LCMS, or the learning management system, SurfPoint has helped us really, really uh, have accountability and make sure that everyone's uh, learning these products. So we've cut out all these sticks, all the fancy sell sheets we used to sell to our sales force are all gone. Literally, we used to spend, gosh, you could spend ten to $20,000 on a launch of stuff, you know, CDs, fancy binders, and now it's in the learning system. They take the course, and, and, and it's always there for them. That's what's so wonderful about it, right? So um, these are some of the courses we've launched, and every single course is strategic. Every single course. It's either very profitable business for us that we want our people to really understand, it's a large opportunity for us. We're not going to spend on $5 million launches. We're not going to put out a course. But when it's you know, a quarter of one of our customers' business, you know, $250 million or, or so, or if it's um, a brand new line of hand tools we just got into, very, very critical as our expanding businesses and brand extensions are used. So what we did, believe it or not, and uh, it's interesting because this company had no fathom of e-learning, we built the first course out of my sales budget. It was $10,000 uh, through CertPoint. Wonderful course, uh, 35 minutes of, of learning on our uh, RYOBI One Plus cordless system, which is big here at B&Q here in the UK. It's huge in Australia if you go to Bunnings. It's a gigantic uh, sales piece. Go over to uh, the US, it's in uh, uh, Home Depot. It's an exclusive brand there. Um, and the RYOBI One Plus cordless course, I actually paid out of my sales budget, which salespeople never pay for marketing, as you know, and marketing never pays for sales. They have these, you know, these linear lines here. And uh, I paid for it because I knew once they saw it, they would all want them. And literally, after we got that first course launch, the product managers and, and marketing directors and, and VPs were lining up trying to get their courses in line. So what we did, though, is we were very careful to make sure they lined up with us increasing share and profits like our corporation talks about. So even though it was very tempting to do certain courses for certain product managers, directors, et cetera, we weren't going to launch them just to launch them. It was a business that my CEO, who's my boss, is saying is not strategic, do not put a lot of focus here. We're not launching courses. It is cordless courses. It's lithium ion. It's accessories, you know, all the drill bits and saw blades, extremely profitable, not only for the retailer, but also for us. And it's the attachments, OK? Uh, the attachments in outdoor products, you know, string trimmer heads, et cetera, that are extremely profitable. When I say profitable in our business, that's like 70 margin. That's almost like Apple profit, okay? You sell a power tool, it's like manufacturing profit. It's 20 if you're lucky. So there's a big difference, you know. So we're strategically launching the profitable products through this first and then some of the other businesses. Um, and uh, we invested about 850000 over the last uh, four years. And, uh, uh, our payback is somewhere around 45 to $47 million. And that's what we can concretely put is money that we returned from um, uh, not taking returns back. That's uh, classroom training. There's a, a bunch of things that fall in the bucket. But this has been extremely successful for us. But again, if I couldn't show the CEO of value selling up front a, a reason, he doesn't even believe in training. Okay, my boss who runs the whole corporation uh, supports me, built the world-class training center, let me do e-learning, but he's brilliant, okay, and that's why he's the CEO. He's got a photographic memory. He went to the University of North Carolina, got a master's, but he learned on the job and worked his way up through from entry level all the way up through to, you know, running. He ran, he was number two guy at Amazon, number two guy at Black & Decker, number one guy at Newell Rubbermaid, and now he runs Tektronic Industries. Unbelievably brilliant man. 
The problem is when I talk training to him is when he was a young guy and he's probably uh, uh, seven years older than me, mid 50s. And what's amazing is when he was a young guy, they put him in a conference room, the eight guys they hired, eight guys and gals they hired, put him in a conference room with a bunch of catalogs and price sheets and the managers went out and smoked and drank all day. You know, study these, learn these. This was, you know, 35 years ago. That's what they did and, uh, in, our, in our old company. So he, he actually memorized everything because he's photographic, right? So he'd look at things, price sheets, and they'd come in and say, what's a 30-30? And he'd say, it's a you know, seven and a quarter inch circular saw, and it uh, cost on it $98. It retails at one. He, he, he could get it. So he, selling him on these programs is tough sometimes because he believes that people aren't like that and can't get it real quick, just get rid of them. You know, that's, you know, that's why he got to where he is, and that's why I'll be a VP the rest of my life. So I don't know how to get rid of people that quickly. Um, so anyways, um, hopefully you got a lot out of this and, and, uh, and, and learned what we use in real life. And some of you are in academia, some of you are in real life, some of you are working for corporations. But I feel that uh, e-learning has changed Tektronic Industries. It's been a very powerful thing. Um, the, the, the whole company has really gotten behind it. And uh, as I mentioned, it's very critical to work closely with your marketing teams, with your business units, because if you don't, they won't want it and they won't understand it and how it can actually save money and how it can you know, create more sales for them. And it's very, very critical. And as I mentioned up front, SurfPoint is our partner. Uh, it's our second run with them, my second run with them. And they've made us look like superstars at, you know, at our corporation. So uh, we have time now, I think. What time is it now? Okay, yep. Thank you very much. Yep, appreciate it.